Tot från Bäckstrån. Vill ni få in So your questions. Yes, please, Rutledge. So the question I've been dying to ask you, Thud, is um, it's a really beautiful work you were showing with the, uh, the formation. Have you looked to see whether or not you're getting an ion concentration and the death of the cell is being caused by a change in the electrolyte balance? So, so this is indeed a, an obvious question, then maybe I didn't, didn't have the time to go into it, but the alanine control, the fact that you can have the same amino acid structure, basically, to a, a, a sweeter ionic form, at even higher concentration, again, we get to one order of magnitude higher concentration, uh, really gives the indication that it's not uh, related to any uh, uh, ionic uh, uh, strength or other kind of uh, uh, effect that is not related to the formation of the structures. So, so this is our control. Uh, we still, if I may uh, uh, a little bit elaborate on it, uh, we still need to understand which of the specific structure is, is related to the formation. You know it very well. It took 15 years with the case of amyloid. We are still trying to understand if it's on pathway or off pathway, but uh, it's, it's not an uh, effect that is, is based on, on just the concentration of ions. In, in the second part. The second part is, do you know where the instability size is? How big does it get before the instability kicks in and it starts to come apart? You've been able to figure that out yet? Again, it's it's very new. As I, this uh, this work will be published, uh, and uh, nicely, since our systems are very simple, we have a lot of competition uh, from our things. So I think that soon we will know about it. We are moving forward to study new systems. So, yeah, thanks. A question for uh, Dr. Haskell. Um, actually, two questions. The first question is, uh, Novartis is not Dendrion, but uh, Provence was not a very big success. He used a sort of similar paradigm as with Provence. Uh, this is the first question. Second is, um, you use lentiviruses and you inject them, and what are the consequences of that in terms of um, regulatory issues um, slash adverse uh, events. Work? Okay, no. Um, let me first answer your questions with Dendrion. Dendrion was a, the first individualized cellular therapy, but was based on very limited efficacy data. There was no, really, no real responses seen um, the manufacturing process was very complicated, and at the same time, we had small molecules coming out which actually had much better efficacy than dendrion. Um, so we do, much, we, we do see very different activities um, with our CTL-19 or a CART approach. Um, nevertheless, the manufacturing, as you've seen, and I think there will be a talk later today, um, is very complicated and very complex and uh, needs to be streamlined over time. In terms of using a lentivirus, I mean, most of the CTL or CART approaches are either using lentivirus or gamma delta retroviruses, which integrate into the host genome. Um, we know from stem cell therapy for skid kits, for example, that depending on the integration, it can cause leukemias. For modifying T cells, it's very different. These are matured cells, they have a different transcription profile, and everything we've done so far to test integration, actually um, activities or, or adverse events caused by the lentivirus are negative. So uh, the safety profile seems to be very good. Also for the manufacturing, actually we're not using a full a genome, we are really using uh, different vectors to assemble the virus. So we will not have a replication competent uh, lentivirus in the product or um, ever detected in the patients.
Thank you. I also have uh, two questions for immunotherapy. But one is how the cost would compare with transplantation, so roughly. And the second is that uh, you have a lot of side effect based on the fact that you have to kill all the B cells. Uh, why don't you use an HLA-restricted target, which is only in the tumor cells? Um, for the cast, I can't really comment. Um, we haven't really figured out um, the costs of it right now. As you can imagine, our manufacturing is still very based on an academic process. Um, in terms of choosing the right target, that's always a matter of discussion. Um, CD19 was the one chosen target because it's really limited to at least the same cell line. Um, and the long-term side effects by immunosuppression are known from all tumor therapy, so it's an acceptable risk. Of course, everybody's trying to identify better targets, um, be it MHC-restricted, be it um, really specific tumor antigens. Um, My, my question is to uh, Professor Sosnik regarding uh, new materials. I saw you work with uh, Pharma today, and how open are pharmaceutical companies to address or to use uh, new materials in drug delivery? They are not open. This is probably the reason we are trying to combine a pharmaceutical, pharmaceutically accepted uh, polymers, even though that if you take two biocompatible accepted polymers and you combine them in one molecule, you need to somehow demonstrate that this new polymer is biocompatible, but it's much f faster in that case that, than using a completely new polymer. So this is the reason we are doing this this way. Uh, no, it's, it's quite difficult to, to get a new polymer in, in, in the market. As long as uh, you have patience, you can do that, but it might take more than 10 years. Yes, uh, to Dr. Gazit, uh, if phenylalanine monomers form uh, structures like oligomers and are more toxic than fibrils in the case of phenylalanine. So uh, what we realize is that uh, it's not the, the, the structures made by the monomers, and, and this is the as I mentioned to the, in the previous answer, the control is based on similar structure, uh, added sweeter ionic uh, amino acid without the ability to form uh, uh, the ordered structure. And moreover, uh, again, I mentioned it in passing, but when we uh, um, produce antibodies, either synthetically against the oligomers or using mouse-based uh, uh, um, uh, antibodies, for me, PKU models, we could uh, deplete the toxic activity. So this is the indication that we have that it's from the oligomers rather than the, the monomeric species. I have a question for Dr. Roman. Um, working with these type of complex uh, programs, uh, predicting relationships between, for instance, genes and diseases, you will always find relations, that's my experience. The question is, how do you validate those relationships? And do you work with, for instance, qualified sources, uh, those types? So how do you address that? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Um, uh, this, is, this is work in progress right now. What we are doing is we are trying to identify, well, from, from the sources Medline or uh, the NCI P, uh, PID database and so on, very well curated databases take that information into account. But of course, you'll find uh, papers where uh, you have one statement A impacts B and the other one says A does not impact B. Um, there are approaches uh, in natural language processing to address that. At the moment, what we are trying to do is uh, just make the data transparent and easily accessible and fast accessible. And it is the researcher's responsibility to go through that and, you know, kind of make, make that, that connection at the moment. But, but there are there approaches to do that, yeah. Uh, my question is to Dr. Ruman. 
I want to know that uh, you're developing big data analysis tools and how good it is and how feasible it is to use cloud computing for that. Like uh, we can involve people across the globe to use your tools and the big data analysis could actually move faster. So what are your views on that? Can we actually do that or are there some proprietary things that are uh, stopping those things? So you mean make the tools more accessible to the wider community so that there's more participation? Is that yes, yes, the question? Yes, yes. Okay, so yeah, it's it's a very good question and, and <laughs> obviously uh, coming from a company, it's, it's, it's a hot seat. But what we are trying to do uh, is that uh, we are trying to build a, society, uh, a community and give access to, to, to as much as we can. So um, when you look at um, you know, what, what, what we offer in Watson Analytics, there is a lot of hackathons or participatory events where you can play with your data using the analysis tools. Um, but also, there, there are other tools. As I mentioned, StringDB is a tool that looks at protein interaction, also integrating data sources from uh, Nextprod, for example, and Swissprod, and, and so on and so forth, where you can have access to similar data sets. So these are, these are open source or, or open access, if you like, and you, know, you can engage with them now. So I think we will go on. We thank very much the speakers of this session. And the next session will be a plenary presentation of uh, Jérôme Gallon. <laughs>